The power you seek lies within you, as we are each infinite beings living a human experience. The truth of who and what we are has been hidden from us until now. Awaken, my friends, to this new reality that we are in fact creating everything through the power and the gift of our wonderful imagination. Join me as I unlock the secrets of our past and reveal the truth that has been clouded in this veil we call life. What reality will you choose to create today? The choice is yours. Welcome, my friends, to my reality practice. Welcome, everybody. Hold on and let me get this going here. Uh, hello, hello, and welcome, everybody, to the first reality practice live podcast here. Uh, this is a live Q&A session that I will be hosting with my good friend, the beautiful and talented Liliana De Cruz. Uh, who I like to call the Manifestation Queen. Unfortunately, she will not be joining us today on the show. Uh, this is the first show ever. We had it all planned out, and she let me know a few hours ago that she is down for the count today. Uh, the energy of the full moon is taking its toll on her. Uh, I know many of you guys are probably experiencing that same uh, feeling and those same energies. I know for me it's it's pretty intense uh, the few days prior to leading up to the new moon and the full moons usually have a huge effect on me so uh, I want to wish Liliana the best today and hope that she gets to feeling better and I know she will but if we want to talk about that discuss that a little later we can definitely go into that aspect of uh, reality creation and the energies involved with that. Uh, this is kind of basically an open forum really for everybody that wants to join in here. Um, you know, be sure to join in next week at one o'clock and one o'clock central time and Liliana will be back on the show and she will grace us with her wisdom, knowledge and beauty then. So for those of you tuning in today asking yourself, you know, what is this show going to be about? Well, this show is designed to help anybody out there who is going through their own great awakening process. Um, you know, this it's hard to make sense of what all's happening right now in the world, especially what's happening inside of us. Uh, we're stepping into a new level of consciousness, and it is it's pretty overwhelming, I'd say, for the least, you know, for most everybody out there um, that's going through this. So. You know, Liliana and me both, we spoke, have spoken quite a few times and we feel like there's a huge need for this out there and for this information, for the truth to start being revealed. You know, we're, we're experiencing an amazing evolution right now in our world as we know it. This three-dimensional, th third-density world is, you know, it's it's changing rapidly. We're evolving into the fourth density and fifth densities of being. And with that, what's really happening is our souls are beginning to awaken and they're starting the process of remembering who and what we truly are. And as we begin to discover more and more, we're diving into these powers. We're starting to learn in science, quantum physics, science is starting to show and prove that the reality we create is in fact all coming from our own minds. It's coming from our own beautiful, wonderful imagination. You know, we're only on the cusp, you know, of what is actually happening in this process. But for me, for Liliana, we wanted to come together and start doing this weekly show so that we can start answering some questions live. I know there's a lot of people out there uh, that are that are very awoke you know to what is this transition to what's happening but there are you know that that might only be five percent of the population the other 95 percent are still sleeping to this reality that we are starting to create we are creating
creating our own reality. And that's what this show is all about. Between the work I've done and Liliana, we have dove deep into the process of manifesting and creating reality. Some of her stories are mind-blowing. Uh, I've got a ton of my own that I can share with everybody uh, as we go through this process. But without any further delay, I guess, let's, let's just open it up and we'll start getting into some topics and everything today. Uh, I'll try my best doing it solo here. Uh, but we can get into anything really, you know, manifesting 101, reality creation, uh, quantum physics, energy healing, meditation, breathing, the whole gamut, spirituality in general, the whole gamut is wide open. And if I can answer those questions for you today, I'm more than happy to, to you know, to give any info I have here. So let's, uh, let's open it up real quick and we'll see who is on the board, who's tuning in and... We'll start off with that. Looks like we've got uh, Liliana. She's in here. Hello, wonderful, uh, beautiful. I hope you're feeling better, and uh, I want you to I want you to rest today and get this out of your system here. So, uh, Pritosh Maru asks, how can we raise our energy levels to attract beautiful things? That is a great question to ask, Pritosh. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. You know, our, the idea is we're all made up of energy. We're all protons and little particles. You know, everything in our reality is made up of energy. And, you know, from the desk I'm sitting at, the chair, the walls behind me, my body, everything is energy. And it's all flowing at a specific, it's all resonating at a specific frequency. And the frequency that we choose to resonate at that's the frequency we're going to we're going to project out onto the world easier said than done Pret okay Pret for short perfect uh, easier said than done the idea of projecting out of raising our energy levels you know it, it all starts in our mind that's what the science is proving you know our, our conscious mind is literally only aware of you know five percent if we're lucky of the thoughts that are coming in and out of our mind i think there's about anywhere between 40 to 60 thousand thoughts we have as humans each and every day so imagine our subconscious mind is literally steering the ship it is running everything maybe we're lucky if we can think of five thousand things a day consciously you know thoughts so in terms of raising your energy levels uh, to attract beautiful things it's kind of a kind of a multi-part answer one we have to be conscious we have to be understanding of the energy that's coming into us meaning the information the knowledge the things we allow into us they're 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 rooting in deep into the subconscious and the more beauty we bring in the more love we bring in the more uh, compassion we bring in for the things we see that's a huge aspect of this uh, you know are there techniques you can do to raise your energy 100% uh, I've got a I've got a couple meditations you can check out on my YouTube channel and I've actually done some heat signature mapping of what happens when we meditate and what happens when we do different breathing techniques and it's very clear what happened in some of my meditations that I've got on there literally the heat the energy in our body just from breathing just from meditating it goes off the chart so I would start in order to raise your energy level I would start with going inwards obviously everything starts inwards that's what everybody says but that's the truth um, start inwards and really work on meditations work on uh, breathing techniques i'm going to, i'm getting ready to put out a bunch of new meditations over the coming weeks that are going to be dedicated solely to breathing and different types of breathing methods that will raise our energy raise our frequency um you know so with that being said let's see what youtube channel yeah that's uh, the youtube channel is simply reality practice so if you type in reality practice, it's going to bring up my channel there. I've got a bunch of interviews, 
bunch of, I think Liliana was on there last week with me. Uh, I've got a bunch of lessons, like teaching lessons, interviews, and uh, meditations, things of that nature. So uh, let's let's stay on track here. Let's 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 keep going down this track of uh, manifesting, of creating a higher, raising your frequency, raising your energy levels higher. I I came to a realization not too long ago that, and by the way, I'm I'm always having new realizations, new epiphanies, so to say. So that's that's completely normal. As we're going through this uh, evolution right now, as we're going through this moment in time, things are coming to us faster and faster. The energies of the universe quite literally are being absorbed into our bodies right now. The sun, everything is putting off energy frequencies. So the idea is how do we resonate to those? How do we tune in and harmonize to those specific frequencies? And the answer is love. Love is the frequency. The love and the light, that, that's really all there is. You know, darkness is only the separation from light. So, with that being said, what, what I, I realized was it's during the manifestation process I know I know Liliana would agree with me here on this as well uh, it is so much easier to manifest for others this is a key principle that I teach about is the idea that we manifest for others is a way to create as a way to create reality a way to manifest things that you want and it's the idea is and I think I've, I've realized is the reason why it's easier to manifest for others than it is for ourself is because it's easier to love and project that love out to people we care about, people that we love, right? So when you harness that energy of love, that frequency of love, when you're thinking about manifesting for others, that frequency, that, uh, that feeling of love comes through you and that has the power to literally, I mean, just create whatever you want. And I've, I've done this so many times now for my wife, for friends, for family, for other people, where I just poured out and I went inside and I felt that idea, that feeling of love for them. And it began creating and manifesting for them faster than I could have even imagined. Now, the opposite of that, and I think the reason why many of us struggle in our manifesting process and our manifesting abilities is because one we're trying to do it manifest things for ourselves i want to be rich i want to have a yacht i want to live on the beach i want a better job many of the things we want are perfectly fine they're perfectly legitimate things to want you know in the at the end of the day there is only you project it out so why would you abuse yourself why would you keep yourself from having the things you want the problem lies I feel in the idea that it's hard for us for most everybody if you haven't done deep healing work it's hard for us to truly love ourselves that's where most of this stems from that's where most of the problems we have in manifesting comes from is we're unable to heal ourselves and therefore we're unable to love ourselves you know we don't feel as though we're worthy of something we don't feel as though we're um, deserving or you know yeah unworthy it's it's a common theme you know so we feel that way about ourselves subconsciously and when we feel that way subconsciously it literally like shuts off the ability to begin manifesting because Again, it has to come from a place of love. And when we're manifesting for ourselves, a lot of times we don't really love ourselves. We, don't, we believe we do. I mean, everybody thinks they do. But the, I, the, the fact is, our subconscious mind has beaten us down into submission so many times from such a young age. You know, and, and it could be just one small little thing that happened to you at four years old, five years old. I know for me, you know, it was five years old. And I mean, there's been multiple things in my life that I, I've gone back and healed from, but it's those small little things, those small little moments in our perceived past that create this, 
uh, create this resistance. They create this feeling, this thought process inside of us that we are not worthy or that we can't receive that love. Therefore, we feel that separation. We feel that uh, disconnect from spirit, from the universe, from God, you know, higher power, whatever you want to call it. When we feel that disconnect because we don't truly love ourselves, that's where the whole process of reality creation, of manifestation breaks down. The more quicker, the more faster we can learn to love ourselves and forgive ourselves, the quicker and faster your reality creation journey, your manifestation journey will begin and it'll start to intensify faster and faster in bigger and bigger things. You know, I've, I've been talking with many people now, you know, I've shared my I've shared my story, I've shared my journey quite a bit, but I haven't I haven't spoken a lot about the things I've actually manifested. Sure, did I rewrite my DNA uh, in December of 2020? Yeah, you know, that's it's it's not a small feat by any means. Completely amazing what I was able to do through the and I did that through the power of compassion, forgiveness, and love. But the idea is, you know, I, I don't really share a whole lot at this point of the things that I have created and manifested on my own. And it truly is just remarkable what I've done. You know, over the past probably year and a half, I have manifested well over, for my wife and I, I've manifested well over, I think, three to four hundred thousand dollars from out of nowhere you know one two yeah almost four hundred thousand dollars from out of nowhere over the last year and a half and I really had to let go in order to do that I let go of the need to control things you know that that's a big it's a big uh, uh, illusion that we have out there is this need to control everything or the thought that we can control everything. We can't control anything for the most part. Very few things can we control. Remember, our subconscious mind is running 60,000 thoughts a day. So maybe 5,000 thoughts you, you're thinking of at any given time during the day, those are thoughts you can control. And those thoughts then have actions associated with them. Many of them do. So. Uh, with that being said, it's it's really you know an idea of we have to focus our thoughts in the proper direction, and we have to let go. We have to give that give the control of it over to God, over to Spirit, whatever you want to call it. And when you do that, something crazy, something magical begins to happen. And when it does, things start to just appear things start to manifest things start to come into light that didn't and weren't there before and just unbelievable for those of you that are big Neville Goddard fans you know he's been a I know for me for I believe Liliana for many of us Neville Goddard has been a huge uh, impact and made a huge impact on this whole revolution this whole ability to create our reality you know Brian Scott has a great channel with the reality revolution over there and you know I owe, I owe much of what I've learned you know in the early beginnings I owed much of what I learned to Brian and his channel but sharing Neville with the world completely you know that is that is a gift that we all have at this point and uh, hey Conti Red Dutsi. I'm sorry if I butchered that. Uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for tuning in here. Um, so, yeah, where was I? Neville Goddard. Such a gift we've been given. And his teachings, you know, they they really hit home as to how this kind of, this process works. And the idea of living in the end. You know, everything. Everything about reality creation about manifestation begins in the mind like I said earlier but it's more than just that it's more than it begins in the mind it begins in our imagination it begins with creating some sort of a thought now whether that thought comes to you through you know your own your own intuition 
uh, your own personal thoughts or whether that thought is bestowed upon you, you know, from higher power, from God, from spirit. You know, however that thought comes in, it is then a vision. It is then, it's, it's then a thought, but that thought is only a thought until action is taken on it. So one of the preachings, one of the things that Neville talks about is living in the end. Um, and living in the end means imagining, imagining so vividly the ending that you want, so vividly seeing, touching, feeling, smelling, tasting the reality that you want to create. And that is the key, one of the keys to beginning to create it into reality. Uh, as far as, you know, creating goes, we can create from fear, which is what most people sadly are doing in this day and age. Uh, you know, and it's, it's not our fault. It's, we've been brainwashed. We've been uh, sold a false bill, you know, of goods here in terms of who and what we are. And the idea is we're so powerful in the fact that we can create anything, but it has to come with that thought that then becomes imagined. That imagination then creates the next action taken, so on and so forth, in order to create the result, right? So um, it really, it, the, um, the mind is so powerful, and what we put into it is what we get out of it. Yeah, let's see. Do we have, uh, let's see if we got any questions here. I feel like I'm rambling. I don't want to, I don't want to keep rambling if we've got people that want to have some questions answered. Let's see. When you take actions, things sometimes start to go wrong and emotions come to play. Yes. Uh, well, is it Pratt, you said? Um, yes. We, unfortunately, are still creating a lot of our reality uh, from, we're creating the wrong reality. And emotions, emotions are one of the other keys to creating the reality we want or don't want. Uh, emotions are, they, they're deep-seated inside of us because of memories we perceive to have. Moments of our lives that were important or impactful, be it good or bad, they create a memory. That memory then gets associated with and attached to an emotion. That emotion is then what drives you subconsciously. It's nothing most of us can actually control. For those of us that can control it, I've been working on it for a long time. For those of us that can control our emotions, it, it takes a lot of practice, but it takes a lot of rewiring also with the brain. You know, if you watch any and read any of Dr. Joe Dispenza's uh, work and his books, you know, he ties a lot of emotions into this creation of our reality. Because if something triggers you, if something scares you, subconsciously even, it goes in and plants itself in your mind. And once that thought has been planted, it can't, go, it has to, by universal law, manifest itself out in some way, shape, or form. Uh, something I began doing, oh, maybe a year ago, two years ago, was, we, you know, we can't stop bad thoughts from coming in all the time. They are going to come into our mind and they're going to have some sort of an effect on our emotional state, whether we realize it or not. So these thoughts start coming into your mind. I've learned that when I do have a bad thought or a sad thought or a scary thought, whatever it may be, I recognize it as quick as possible. You know, it's like I turn on the light like, okay, wait a minute. That thought is simply a thought, right? and it can manifest and go anywhere. Well, in this reality I live in, that thought does not exist. I give that thought no power. So I make sure to recognize when I have a bad thought or something fear-based, I shut it 
down. It's not in my reality. It's not in this dimension, basically. Uh, I, don't, I don't resonate at that frequency. I command things more now than I used to. Uh, I, don't, I don't just let the world happen. I command the world the way I choose to see it. And if you choose to command it out of fear, if you choose to command it out of hatred, out of anger, that is what will manifest for you. If you choose to create it solely from love, which, which is hard to do a lot of times, you know, and I'm not perfect, so don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not one that's preaching on it. I, I screw this up all the time, you know, and it's, it's that idea of catching yourself. Boom. Turn that light switch off. Not in my reality, not in my current existence does that happen. So therefore, it's just a thought. Let it go. Let it go out into the ether. It will play itself out. You got to think. There's an unlimited, infinite number of realities based on quantum physics. Everything that could happen is happening right here, right now, to you, to me, to everybody. And it's simply the frequency we choose to resonate at. If there's an infinite number of frequencies that we can be on, you know, like this like on a radio dial. Which frequency do you choose to be on? That's the reality that's happening in that frequency. Bad things happen in certain frequencies. Amazing, unbelievable things happen in other frequencies. And then there's everything in between. It's learning how to tune in, tune our bodies, tune our minds, tune our souls into that harmony, that harmonize with that frequency that you want to resonate at and tell yourself that is who you are, that is what you are, and that's what you're going to resonate with. So um, I don't know if that answered your question, Brett, but uh, let's see. Why are we facing this pandemic situation in the world? Well, that, I, have, I have many, many thoughts on that one, but uh, at the end of the day, I think, now you may agree with me, a lot of people may not. You know, there is no perceived evil in the world there's only or there is no evil in the world there's only the perception of evil and this can get really confusing this can get really uh, you know deep on a lot of levels there is only good there is only light there is only love right but why is all this happening right now why are we facing this situation in the world we're at a precipice. We're at a time and a point in our evolution where it's time to either graduate, it's time to move on, or we're going to repeat it all again. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I, I like to, I like to uh, use the uh, reference kind of. You know, it's it's as if you're in senior year of your finals right now, and you know, when we get through this, we graduate, we move on to the next level college whatever you want to call it but at the same time there's a lot of people that are just in 11th grade 10th grade a lot of people are freshmen right now and it's not their fault it's not their fault where they're at on this evolutionary timeline remember we're infinite we're infinite beings we never die there's only now right and we're all at different stages of this journey so what's happening in the world right now yeah it's been caused I believe to awaken this in all of us, all of us that are able to and prepared to accept it, to understand it, to dig deep and to ask the questions, to seek the truth. This is what this is for. We are awakening as many of us as we possibly can to the truth of what's been hidden from us. And the fact is we're creating on a collective scale right now, all the souls on the earth collectively, we are creating this reality. This reality changes when enough of the collective change the reality. So what's happening is we're being programmed. And we've been programmed for decades and decades, if not hundreds of years and even thousands of years. We've been programmed by religion. We've been programmed by the media. We've been programmed by uh, basically everybody, the education system. Uh, We've been programmed to believe certain things, and those things that we've been programmed to believe tie back into those emotions that were brought up earlier. Uh, the emotions 
tie in to the everything we've been programmed with. It becomes much easier than to control us. It becomes much easier than to uh, manipulate us into creating the wrong reality because we are in such fear. Most people are still so fearful of things that they're creating more fear. Their subconscious mind is creating more fear. I believe this is the secret that they know, those in control know. They are literally just continuing to program us through fear, which continually just creates more and more crap, more and more pain, more and more misery, more and more suffering. So raise our vibrations, raise our consciousness as to who and what we are and start creating responsibly. No longer let fear, even subconsciously, drive you because the fear is again creating it. It's super powerful for manifesting, but what's even more powerful is love. You know, if on a scale of one to 100, if, if fear is powerful, it can manifest things at five, 10%, let's say. But as far as love, it jumps it all the way up to a hundred. You know, I mean, it is 10 to one in terms of fear, but there's just so many people still afraid. Um, so I can tell, I can say from, you know, from what I believe and what I have been shown and all that comes with it, this is all happening for a specific reason. We have to see the good. We have to choose to see the good behind the cloud of darkness behind the cloud of evil um, we're gonna need to learn some really big lessons in compassion in forgiveness and love as we move through this process and we heal from this and I, I believe that's that's one of the big keys here is we have to instead of are people going to be brought to justice are are those are there certain people that will be held accountable I believe they will but at the same time, it's not our place to judge, you know. Only God truly can judge. It is our responsibility to try and see the good even through the bad, to feel the compassion, to forgive when we can forgive. And when we all start to do that, again, this whole situation begins to clear itself up. It begins to right itself. It begins to take us into the new earth, the fifth density that we've all, and the fourth density that we've all been preparing for. You know, we are now in that final shift. You know, today's the solstice, the 21st of December. We have officially, from what everybody I've read, from everything that's out there, even the ancient texts, you know, this is the moment that the new earth truly begins. And what that means is we're leaving that third density, uh, the third density of polarity, of good, bad, evil, love, whatever you want to call it, right, wrong. We're transitioning from that third density out into the fourth and the fifth, which the fourth is all love. And then the fifth is all about wisdom. Some of us are, some of us are higher up. Some of us are in 12th grade we're graduating we'll move on to fourth or fifth density some of us are just sophomores and freshmen we won't move those people won't move on I might be one of them who knows you know so I'm not judging anybody but they won't move on uh, until they've learned their lesson and at that point it might be another whole cycle you know they might have to do this third density all over again they from the raw material uh, the law of one you're talking 25,000 three 25,000 year cycles to make up 75,000 year cycle, which is what we're at the end of right now. Uh, so with that being said, you know, see compassion, see the love in everybody. Don't, don't worry about who's doing what, who's complying with this, who's not doing that. Focus on yourself, love yourself, know that you're creating this and love everybody because it's just you projected out laugh at somebody if you get don't if you don't agree with them laugh at them if you don't like what you're seeing if it scares you shut it down and laugh at it you're creating it literally you're writing this movie you scripted it out before you came here to be exactly this way the sooner we can 
see the humor in it and the love in it, the quicker we can get out of it and start the new transition. Uh, you know, it's there's a lot to it. As we go along on these weekly shows, I, I definitely want to dive into the law of one, the raw material. We'll dive into Urantia, um, you know, a course on miracles. These are all just a few of the books that have been, you know, that have helped guide me along the way. I mean, there's countless numbers. Uh, I think I'm I'm just shy of about 400 books I've read in the last uh, 18 to 24 months. Uh, I'm an avid reader, so you know I've kind of inundated myself with every book I could possibly find, you know that that resonated with me in terms of spirituality and science and manifestation, you know all all of this. So, you know I I'm happy to have some shows that are devoted entirely to, you know, talking about some of these books, some of these principles uh, that Ra and others talk about. So let's uh, let's look at another question here, uh, Pret. I hope I hope that answered your question. It might have been a little longer. That was Conti there. So um, let's see protection. Many around me are lost. They are afraid. And Conti Conti says, but many around me are lost. They are afraid and they are asleep. Yeah. You know, cognitive dissonance, but the bottom line is nobody's asleep. Nobody around you is lost. Nobody around you is afraid because in actuality there is nobody else but you. Sure, we're all individual entities creating our own separate reality. We're all co-creating, working together, but at the end of the day, the reality is there is only you, there is only me. And the perception, whatever we project out at the world, is what we create. And again, it's going, it's being created through our subconscious mind, nearly all of it. Um, you know, are people lost? Are people afraid? Are people asleep? Yes, because in our minds, that's what we feel still is happening. That's what we feel still needs to happen, maybe. You know, I try to, about a year ago, I stopped worrying and I stopped concerning myself with those who were still asleep or those who were afraid. And like I said, I, I really began to see the humor in it. I really began to understand that if I'm really creating this and projecting it out, why the hell am I creating it? Why am I projecting that specific thing out? And a lot of it has to go with going back inwards and beginning to heal those things that we don't even know exist. Uh, you know, it's focus, continue to focus on you. This is a selfish, you know, we're all about service to others. You know, there's service to self and there's service to others. However, this is a moment for us, each as an individual, to be selfish because we have to heal ourselves first before we can begin to impact and heal others. The world as we know it, your perception of reality as you know it will change when you change on the inside. Stop, a le like I said, see the compassion for those who are still afraid. See the forgiveness for those who have wronged you. Um, you know, love them. Even if they're asleep, you still love them. You know, love them like God. Like, our, like the Almighty Spirit, love them like He loves each and every one of us. You know, would you ever turn your back on your child? We're all His children, and therefore we're all part of Him. So therefore, love everybody around you as if they are you, because they are. You're creating them. You're creating this movie. You, just, you signed up for it. We're just remembering now what we signed up for, and it's frickin' hard. It's scary at times. It's overwhelming. But we literally, we wrote this script in order to come play it out and see how we would, see how we do. Will we pass? Will we fail? You know, it's, each person is, you know, on their own here, but we're not. We are, we're, we're the giant collective, all living individual existences as part of one big 
whole program known as God in the universe. So let's see what else we got here. Uh, let's see, Andy, thanks for tuning in. And Diana Fernandez, thanks for popping in. Diana asked questions. Let's see, thank you for taking reassuring knowing. Let's see, very strong energies. We are light and love. We cannot be deceived by these procedures which want to pull and steal our souls. Absolutely right. Uh, don't give them the power. Don't give that negative energy the power that we think it deserves. You know, uh, Christ consciousness, Liliana chimed in on it. Let's see here. Got that right. Fear begets fear. Yes, yes it does. Uh, Please bring Liliana to cruise in. I wish I could, Diana. She is, she's on her deathbed today. No, not no, not really. But uh, you know that that's something we can. I mentioned earlier. You know, she she reached out to me this morning. Said she was just, she was down for the count. Right. Said that the energy from the full moon was really overwhelming. Said it happens to her each month. She gets really, uh, really sick and a bug whatever you want to call it uh each month basically when the full moon is out and you know it's so that's something that we don't talk enough about i feel like they've, they've made astrology such a quasi like conspiratorial like it's it's something fun something to read in the papers but it's not real that's where that's where they're they're hiding more stuff from us the pull and the polarity, the, the energies we're receiving from the sun and the moon have huge impacts on our body. Uh, oh, Liliana says, bring me in. Let me see if I can add her in real quick. Uh, and then she can talk about it. Let's see. Oh, Liliana, I don't think I have an ability to bring you in now that it's already started. I'm looking here. Let me see what happens if I click on... Nope, it just says in video if I click on you there, so... Uh, yeah, I don't think I can bring you in, hon. Um, I'd love to on this one. Nope. Doesn't look like it, so... Unless you know how to do it, uh, otherwise, you know we got we got a little bit of time left. I'll just close out this week, but and have you on there next week. So if I can, I'll get back to kind of these energies. Here's what it's all based around: our human bodies, our three-dimensional, third-density bodies. We consist primarily of water. Now that water, just like the tides of the ocean, uh I can invite people at the bottom. Mine doesn't have the invite on it. It's different, I think, because I'm already broadcasting live. It just gives me view insights there. So, yeah, we'll have to figure it out more. Um, so, anyways. So, yeah, we're all full of, we're all, our bodies are full of water. So the moon, just like it pulls on the tides back and forth, it has that same pull on our bodies, you know, but it's so much more than that. Uh, the energy that's coming off of it is affecting our bodies. It's, uh, I think it's uh, Hirotum Hiroshima, or, uh, oh, I can't think of his name. He did the, one of the water experiments um, that shows the power of, positive words on plants you know uh, and this is where they put two different plants in two separate rooms and they each day for I don't know how long they went in and they told one plant I hate you you're disgusting and they went in and they told the other plant I love you you're beautiful and the plant that they talked down to with the hate that plant actually died really quick and the plant that they gave and talked love and told it it was beautiful it flourished and grew faster and faster and the other one died so just like our bodies you know the words we say the words we put into us 
uh, the energy we bring in, it's all being affected and it's affecting that water that's within our bodies and it resonates. So as for the the sun and the moon and the um, astrological things, you know, we are we are literally just this tiny little planet revolving around the sun that's shooting through the galaxy of the Milky Way that's in turn spinning around the entire universe. Now, as we're traveling on that path, we have certain energies and polarities uh, that are coming in and out at all times. So, you know, we're, we're traveling at millions of miles an hour through the universe right now, and we're hitting certain patches of energy, highs and lows that are actually affecting and changing our bodies, our DNA, everything. So uh, I know Liliana can talk more about it when she comes back with us next week. But yeah, I don't have a green button, Liliana. Um, I wish I could bring you in. Why don't we, how can we unite to overcome evil? We all meditate on money and do not help souls unconditionally. Well, that's a good one, Conti. Uh, again, like I mentioned earlier, really it's the easier, the way to manifest, it's much easier when we manifest for others than it is for ourselves. And yeah, most people, they try and use manifestation powers for you know selfish gain and a lot of times usually it doesn't work because you're not you're not projecting it out with love you're not projecting it out um, in an attempt to help others you know evil ends or the perception of evil it ends when we choose to stop stop dropping to that frequency all it is is a frequency so when we stop dropping to that frequency of the negative and we try to stay in the positive as much as we can, you know, can I, am I the best at it? No. You know, I'd like to think that 90% of the time I'm in a positive state of mind and I'm feeding my mind with positive thoughts. Uh, but yeah, in order to, you know, I think over to overcome this perception of evil, we have to have a global shift, which is happening now. We're all learning to love ourselves a little bit more. And as we love ourselves, we are learning to love others. And we're learning to share that love with others. You know, for, for example, when I, when I manifest a lot of the things I do, I manifest them for my wife, for my family, for my kids, for the ones around me. You know, I, I don't concern myself with the outcomes. I just ask for it. I command it and then I allow it to just happen um, you know and it it comes again from that place of love you have to really go deep I'm gonna put some meditations together that will help us do this uh, and they will invoke and help people guide them deep inside to where they can start to pull out those those feelings of love those emotions that play such a huge role here um, that's really the key when we when we meditate we go inwards and we we meditate on love think of you know the think of if you have children think of your children when they were born think of that moment in their lives or in any of your lives where it was the most magical loving moment of your life I go back there constantly you know if I want to manifest something quick I go straight to the image of my children both of them being born and I remember that moment and it overwhelms me with this feeling of love that is just so overpowering it's at that moment that I then begin to imagine I shift from thinking about them creating and generating that feeling that energy of love then I shift and I move to projecting it out and commanding it into something I want for others you know if for instance if I want to become rich I don't manifest the money for me I manifest what I will do in the world 
for other people that will bring in the money for me. I manifest what my wife will become when she becomes, you know, as she's running her own business. When she becomes su successful at her business, I manifest and I envision her success. Her success, in turn, will help bring money and wealth in. It's all, it's all a matter of how you view it and who you choose to manifest for and how you choose to manifest, you know, for them is if you can do it in a loving way that helps everyone involved, then it in turn helps you. But if you're solely manifesting for yourself, it's very hard because that's still the selfishness uh, that, that counteracts this ability to create that we've all been given. Uh, so let's see, do we have much, anything else here? See if I missed anything. Uh, and we can begin, we can cut this episode a little short since Liliana is not here today, but I definitely wanted to get going, you know, get off, start the first episode and uh, see where it takes us here. And as you can see, we're, we're going to get in each week into some deep stuff, some more than others. But uh, I'd really, you know, I'd really love everybody that's chimed in today, that's asked questions. Uh, super appreciate you tuning in. Uh, if you liked what you liked, what I talked about, be sure to give the page a like, follow me. Uh, again, I'm my YouTube channel is Reality Practice. Uh, Instagram, I'm at Kramer Joey on Instagram. I do have a TikTok that is Joey Speaks the Truth on TikTok, and then my website, MyRealityPractice.com. So uh, if this stuff resonated with you, you know, give it a thumbs up, a heart, share it with other people. Let's try and get as many people as we can to come in uh, to the show each week and. We'll toss around some great ideas. We'll toss around some incredible information. And, you know, our, our hope is that it's going to help people through this transition, help people answer their questions. You know, what is manifesting? How, what's awakening? You know, what is this process about? What is quantum physics? You know, uh, what is love? What is compassion, forgiveness? I mean, the gamut goes on and on, you know. So we hope each week that we can really bring something special to everybody here and let's make this a community let's make this something where we can really help one another you know uh thanks again for tuning in today uh, i'm excited for this new venture here and until next time what reality are you choosing to create